So I would say that the word is connected. Hi everyone, I'm Shehani Liu. Welcome to the special episode of Center Stage. Today we have with us a very, very special individual. And it's none other than the Rotary International President, Mark Maloney. Could you describe yourself in one word? I would have to say that particularly this year, that word is connected. As you know, my theme this year is Rotary Connects the World, and I'm connected to Rotary, connected to other Rotarians, connected to my family, connected to my business, and so I would say that the word is connected. If you happen to write an autobiography, what would be its title? If I were to write an autobiography, what would be its title? A life of connections. Elegant, patient, innovative. Best word that describes you. Of those three words, hopefully innovative. I'm not sure that I'm terribly patient. And I don't think I'm elegant. Well, dressed in a tuxedo tonight, perhaps I am elegant, but not normally. What's your favorite sport and favorite sports team? I guess I would have to say that my favorite sport is American football and my favorite team is my college team at Harvard University. One thing you loved about Sri Lanka that you would like to see in your country? The politeness. Now that we got some interesting answers, let's move on to some important questions. What would be the current issue that you would like all Rotaractors to focus on? The issue that I would like Rotaractors to focus on is continuing their relationship with Rotary. Last night, I mean, la this currently, only 4% of Rotaractors transition into Rotary. And my, my impression is that Rotaractors enjoy their connection with Rotary International through their membership in their Rotaract clubs. And I don't understand why they don't continue that relationship in a Rotary club. And one of the rationales behind the changes that have just been approved by the board to be effective July 1st is to provide a greater opportunity for a transition. So there's, there's not just an artificial cutoff at age 30, so that hopefully Rotaractors will be better prepared, better able to transition into a Rotary Club. Climate change is considered to be a significant issue facing the world today. What initiatives do you think Rotarians and Rotaractors should take towards fighting climate change? I think that Rotary needs to be keenly involved in environmental awareness and environmental protection. I encouraged the Board of Directors of Rotary International to ask the trustees of the Rotary Foundation to include the environment as an additional area of focus. Right now, you can do some things with the environment and other areas of focus, but there's no feeling that environment is a priority issue for Rotary. And so I am, my focus is let's get the environment as an area of focus in the Rotary Foundation, which will carry over into Rotary, and let's move forward. When you say climate change, in many parts of the world, climate change is a simple statement. In the United States, that's a politically charged term. And so I'm careful. I think we need to be careful about how we address climate change. 
let's focus on environmental awareness, environmental protection, and everything we do in that regard will help the entire situation. A message you would like to leave to all Rotaractors watching. Well, I just encourage Rotaractors to stay involved with Rotaract, to undertake greater community service through their Rotaract clubs, and to seriously consider that transition into Rotary once they reach whatever age it may be. I mean, the board has now said each Rotaract club can establish its own age limit. And whether you reach that age limit or not, I think you need to consider seriously consider transitioning into Rotary. And if there's not a Rotary Club that satisfies your needs, in other words, if, it's, if the only Rotary Clubs in your area are traditional clubs that operate in formalized ways that are not really what you're looking for, then start your own Rotary Club that meets in new and exciting ways. You know, there's, there's nothing that says that we have to have this formal process and you know that there always has to be a vote of thanks and that there always has to be you know this protocol at the beginning of the meeting there doesn't even have to be food to have a meeting people find that shocking that there's not a constitutional requirement for food in order to have a meeting but we need to have more flexibility more innovation so that we have lots of different clubs in a particular area that are serving different types of individuals.